So welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is a live show with live peoples. So welcome to Bunny's Designs. Recorded for Ustream.tv and also for YouTube for people to watch at their leisure. Um, I've bought some new, found some new art aquella or aquel um, near color twos. They're very similar to near color twos, but they were basically what near color twos were before they made near, before they were rebranded near color twos. Um, and they're just a little fat stick of the same. Ne nearly all of them, I would say, are almost identical. They're not exactly identical, but most of the colors I've found are not far away. So you can basically do whatever I'm doing with these. You can do with the neo color twos. So I've had a look at um, my little color wheel because I've got some turquoisey blues in here um, and I was having a play to, to grunge up some bright colors because I always panicked. I can do trees and f natural things but doing meta um, mechanical things I'm not very good. So I had a play with some greys that I made from a color palette of watercolors um, but I wanted to have a play with some brighter colors and see if I can kind of bright up some gungy and grunge up some bright colors and get them kind of a bit metallic but still have color in them so I like the way that was going and how I did it was I chose complementary colors and I scratched two colors together so the green grunged up the red and the red grunged up the green and remember what I was saying about greys and shadows, never add black, always add the complementary colour and that's what makes it a, the shades dark and tones darker. Some people call them tones and some people call them shades, but it's basically a green that's dark for shadows. So if you've got a really dark shadow, you want more red. If you want just a touch of a shadow, you want a tiny drop of red into your green and vice versa if you want to darken a red don't put black in it put a touch of green in it and that works for every complementary color and that's why those colors look quite nice together so I usually do the rule of three but this is using complementary colors to grunge them up so here I don't have any I just put some red and some green and a touch of brown because I was having a play um, because I thought I'd do this the brightest and then I'm going to grunge them up on the metal side. So that was the idea uh, and I'd not done this before so um, I'm going to zoom in and then you can see exactly what I was doing. And I've moved the camera so it's all repositioned at the moment. Any nearer and I'll have to move the coffee. Excuse me, just having a quick slurp. So I'm using, I'm using on here, <coughs> I've got um, Caran d'Ache uh, Yellow Ochre, or it's just Ochre, Malachite Green, Permanent Blue, Reddish Orange, Prussian Blue, Lemon yellow, cobalt violet, cadmium, golden cadmium yellow, dark ultramarine, light cadmium red, grass green, I think it's a reddish purple, purplish red, and I just, just have the burnt sienna. And I'm not using the black and the white. So this is a wonderful little set. And my daughter uses it, so that's why it's not <laughs> perfect. So I took the um, grass green and the light cadmium red. And I was scratching the red where there wasn't any cross hatching, which is to me a highlight and then just scratching a little bit of green on the other places uh, 
um, and then I'm just going to scratch the tiniest bit of brown around the outside and I'm using a number one and a number two Derwent watercolour brush because they're my favourite. They're the least uh, and a baby wipe. They're the they're the driest you can get. I've lost my baby wipe now. Oh, it's a bit of a dry baby wipe that just wet it a bit. Don't really need to wet it. The idea is to take water off. rather than put water on. So it's just a damp baby wipe. And every time, it, you have to clean your brush every time and twist it to, a, to its natural point before you work because the nails are very, very highly pigmented. So I think I'm going to work with a bit bigger brush. So I squeeze water comes out my hands don't work very well and then I twist it to a point so it's just damp and if you work with the tip you don't get as much water out so I kind of want to go around everywhere that's got this color that is a little bit too wet for me but it'll be fine and then as you can see, the brown is grunging up a little bit. And that's a little bit too wet for me. Um, a little bit too wet but I kind of fancy that to be quite bright I think but when it comes to this side here I want to kind of really grunge it up so I'm going to put I'm going to work with a smaller brush actually because I think it's a smaller space. So we get the red first and then we kind of mix that together. And what that's going to do is the red will grunge up the green. But I do want a little bit of difference. I don't want it mixed exactly 50-50. I want it to be kind of grunged up a little bit. I'm not sure if I'm going to stay with just the red and greens. I think I quite fancy doing a mixture. So here I've got the French Ultramarine, dark French Ultramarine and, and I've got the <coughs> golden cadmium hue but cadmium yellow would be fine it's just a warm it's a warm cadmium so do the yellow first and then go into the blue and instantly that yellow is dulling that French ultramarine I didn't want that side to be dull, I wanted that side to be bright, but never mind. <laughs> and we just put a touch of purple in there. And a bright ye lemon yellow in there. And you could do this with watercolour, you could do this with any kind of water-based medium you have. Hi Emma, welcome to Bunny's Designs. Anybody else popping in? I'm having a play with my my nails, but not my new ones. This is my my older set. I'm just getting a feel for them because I haven't played with them really for a long time. 
so I was trying to get a bit of a feel for them so um, I'm use the bit bigger brush on this one As soon as you mix that green in, it dulls that down and the red dulls the green down. So you end up with some very unusual grunge colours. When really you've got the same colours as you have on that side. So I've got a... And if you can't get into this, because it is a bit of a small space use the edge and that's why the other neos would be better so go to a smaller brush and if you have a bit of grunge on there just put it somewhere else So we've got, and it really is just a little bit of a, sc a scrape of colour. You don't really need a lot. Get that orange going, and then activate that green, and we can grunge up both then. And you get kinds of bright colours but they they kind of just that toned down because the greens toned down the red and the reds toned down the green and I'm going to try a green and a purple next uh, sorry green and a purplish pink because some of the colours I got the other day I quite liked so again we'll just activate that pink purplish red and immediately that's grunged down that green then drag it back and it'll grunge the pink down as well. So you'll end up with two grunged colours. And that's kind of got me over the panic of these horrible, well they're not horrible, but these mechanical things that I'm not used to. Too. And because it's mechanical, you don't really have to worry about getting it perfect it's just supposed to be kind of grungy and what I was doing before was any extra colour had left I just coloured in the unusual little pipes that are hanging about to keep this kind of grunge to keep this grunge going and um, there's a yellow ochre there And that's the malachite green so again that's a different green so just going to swap to a smaller brush so since you've activated that you can drag it down and then when you drag it back it takes that hint off and it's quite quick to do um let me try this this one i haven't played with this one it's kind of a an orange color So you can try it with different blues and different different complementary colours. And as if you look on your colour wheel, or you can just you can just write out a colour wheel. So a simple colour wheel will be we've got a red purple and a red orange yellow orange and a yellow green and then we have a blue purple and a blue green and then we have green here we have orange there and we have purple there and then you have a purple red you have a purple blue you have a red sorry you have an orange red and you have an orange yellow you have a green yellow and a green blue and all you have to do is to you know that they go there 
and you know that they go there and you know that they go there but now you can look at the other ones as well so if you have a ready purple you can go for a green yellow if you have a purple red you can go from a yellow green if you have an orangey red you want to go the green needs to be bluer oopsie sorry <laughs> so if you can make your color wheel like that you don't have to do it with your colors if you don't want to but that means that you know that if your purple is bright purple you want a bright yellow if your blue is a normal bright blue you want an orange but if your blue is a purple blue like a, f a French ultramarine you can kind of take that and get um, a colder yellow so I put my cold yellow here next to my dark next to my purple but I can also use it with this blue my colder one is with a colder yellow because it's purplier so you can have a bit of a play and see what what is best for complementary colors for grunging up if you have your color wheel then you can see that the purple is yellow but if it's a ready purple you want a yellow green the red is obviously bright green bright red but then we've got an orangey red that would be like a, a blue green the same with the yellows the yellow if you have a, a yellowy orange you want a blue purple so you can have a bit of a look at this and it will show you um, so if you have a ready purple like this one I used it with I can use it with a light green I mean I only have one green here but I could use it with a lighter green and it will grunge it up that's going to give you a lot more colors you've doubled your colors instantly so welcome to Bunny's Designs thanks for stopping by everybody I hope everybody's okay so I'm having a play with these um, these colors and then you just you pick what you want so we've got red and pink so if we go down here the yellow ochre was quite nice if I put the yellow ochre on that one and I'm using that with the malachite green um, so activate the lightest color first and then once you touch the manipulate the green it isn't its normal green and then just gently just once over the top and you've just knocked that yellow down so we've got a bit of orange and I'm going to do a bit of purple in this one and you don't have to stick to the same ones have a play experiment some will work better than others what I'm trying to do is is, is have some blending colors rather than just a dead color um, now I may have to do this a bit different because it's a smaller space um, so I'm going to take this color here and I'm just going to put some there clean the brush and just taking that color off
and I just work like that all the way around <coughs> so and try this one here and I'm only scratching the tiniest bit of color because I can manipulate it with the brush so do the yellow first dull the purple and then stroke back to dull the, the yellow and it goes very grungy I think I'm going to try and drop the camera a bit lower so just bear with me because I'm not happy about how the camera is so bear with me a bit because that might be a little bit with the uh, I think that should be fine can we read the nail art should be better you can possibly see what I'm doing now so I'm going to work on this to move these to one side you have to be comfortable if you're not comfortable it's it's more difficult so I should leave that there so um, I think I might try that pink so scratch a bit of pink and it is just a little tiny bit of a scratch and if it's a small space use a smaller brush so this is the pink this is the ready pink which is quite vibrant but then as soon as I touch the green the green gets knocked back and so does the pink and if you carried on mixing it you would just get your whatever colour it would make but you need to stop before it's a bit like when you're making a, a tiramisu and you want some swirls if you carry on continuing stirring you'll get one flat colour but if you stir a certain way you'll get your darkest your lightest and you get colours in between and it's very similar to that I'm just going to steal a bit of colour and manipulate that to that and I think I'm gonna go out have some pink on this one. I do like the pink and the green one. I like that one a lot. But experiment. Use three colours if you want. If you get that pink to its brightest and then dull the green down. And then just swipe once over that pink and it just knocks it back. And then, as I say, if you've got you always make a grey when you do that. So the grey I've just covered into something else. Um, so I'm going to put my paintbrushes there. Then I'm not. Overlapping all the time. So this section here, I think we'll have. Oh, we've had that one. Oh, no, we haven't had that one. We've had that yellow. Let's see, change that. We'll put... Because remember, the yellow oranges was going to go with either a purple or a blue, so you can change it. So we'll manipulate that. I 
red and green. And same with the red. The red can have a strong red or it can have a shorter red. Sorry, the red can have a green or it can have a malachite, a greeny blue. And, and I think it just gives you a few more unusual colours, just rather than the vivid, bright colours. Um, and it's always nicer to use... It's always nicer to use um, colours you've made yourself. So if you have two or three blues and reds, mix and match them together. So we'll get all the yellow first. And once you've got that orangey yellow on there, it's going to grunge up quite nicely. I'll just leave a little bit because that is still not that brightest orangey green that's here. And you'd end up with lots and lots of colours that you wouldn't normally have. It's very roughly done as well. I'm actually going to change that. Oh, I'm going to use this one because I quite like this one as well. So I have the yellow ochre. Because they're quite near on the colour wheel. Um, sometimes they're quite nice. You must remember to clean your brush every time because you contaminate your colours. And you'll end up with a third colour which we don't really want. And then once you've activated that blue, the blue gets dulled almost immediately. Um, I'm going to take a bit of that colour off. I do need a little bit, so I just need to get some a good coating of that yellow. to dull down that. Probably put a bit too much on there. So if you can just, and then leave it to dry. It'll be perfectly okay as long as you leave it to dry. Uh, I'm going to try, I'm going to try some red and malachite green which is greeny blue it's not it's not the blue we had so we need to get in there with that red Just keep working, working your way around, picking off certain colours, and you're not using very much colour. And I think I'm just going to put a little bit of that blue in there. It's going to make it quite an unusual bug because it's going to have some really, really unusual colours in it. Um, I don't know if to do it red and green underneath. I will carry this purple bit down here then to there.
you can see immediately that that purple is dulled because of the yellow and the yellow is dulled because of the purple possibly should have a little bit more purple in there I do like this orange and the orange and the malachite is quite nice. I think I'm going to do this wing in this colour. I think if we could just squish the book across a bit. So Use the bigger brush for this. So. so I do need to have quite a lot of the orange activated before I touch the blue because these are both really strong colours. in smaller spaces but it's okay it's made some very nice greens It's going to be quite a bright wing when it's finished. a little bit of blue down that one so 
this side here. Um, I think we can grunge up. And which one do I like? I like the pink. The pink and the green one are quite nice, actually. So we'll just put a bit of a scratch on the light, and then oh, this cross hatching is just a bit of green. own thing that one because it's so you want the pink first So they're not ma they're not mixed. All that's happening is that pink's dulling that green, and the green is dulling the pink. So you get a hint of both. And then I have a green a grey on the end of here now. So if I move to here, you can just colour that in. And you make that's how you find your really nice greys. It's by mixing two complementary colours together. Now it's a little bit intricate, is this, I have to say. I'm gonna try malachite with that red and see what happens. It's a different green. And it depends which brush you use. If you use a smaller brush, you probably get a little bit better. But immediately that pink, that red dulls that down and it becomes a grunge colour. Definitely unusual colours, especially for me. Some really bright, grungy colours in there. But if you don't want to take them to their completely blended stage, because you'll lose that that lightness. I'm just going to put a bit more yellow in that one, I think. And um, there's so many different combinations, sometimes you've just got to remember which ones you've used.
So we'll just get this going. Just, as soon as we've got all that red going, we can manipulate it into that green, but not too much because we don't want to make brown. We want to keep our grunge greens and our grungy reds. So we don't want a hint of the green to stay there. Obviously when I start with the butterfly it's going to look so much different to this. And I've got enough to do a nut on the outside. And it doesn't really matter that I'm not always in the middle. You can manipulate it with the the paintbrush and then make highlights and lowlights and shadows as you want. And I just keep plodding along until we get a fair amount done. But mix your blues up. Use a purple blue with a, an orangey yellow or reddy yellow. Try to mix them up a bit and then you get a double amount of colours. And if you do make a mistake, just take some off. Leave it to dry, then go back into it with a little bit of orange and it should brighten it up a bit. And try to remember to clean your brush because you'll contaminate your brighter colours. You need the bright colours to start with. Well, you can kind of grunge them up a bit. I have pink and green there, don't I? 
and sometimes you need to think about what you where you're putting things I'm gonna use that different green on there see what that does do that one with I think I might do it purple and yellow I think wing I might try to do it with the other oak and see what that does should be different clean that because it's a big space and there's a lot of purple Hold it down a bit. This is what I wanted to practice with because I don't really like this page, so I can practice on this one. And then I can iron out the colours that I like and leave out the colours I don't like. Sorry, there could be a bark alert in this. Second apologies. So I'll zoom out and you can see what it looks like. All those really bright, vivid colours. So it, it it's, I'm not sure if I like that, but it, it'll grow on me. But you can think about colours. Um, I like this section here um, but I'm not sure about the other section but I do like this section and that's actually making me feel okay because when I do the butterfly I'm gonna I can pick out certain things and it'll all be small areas so they'll all be kind of like this so I think that will work quite well. I think that will work quite well. But it is fairly quick. It's not taking me so long. Um, and it's 
it's it's fairly nice to play with so mixing a few different colors together I think the smaller brush works better got that little bit more control over everything and sometimes you get it right and sometimes it doesn't mix as well but for a water brush it's not so bad and it's completely different to some other colour things that I've been doing so I quite like that idea as well is that you know I've <coughs> excuse me my colours are changing from water colours to bright colours so they're changing a bit. So I'm just probably me have a mouthful of coffee. But there are a lot more colours in here than just the 15 that I'm playing with or um, playing with 13 colour, uh, 12 colours. I've just got 12 colours, so I'm quite pleased that I'm playing about with those. And you really do not need very much at all to get a good mix. And again, just one touch to take that, that bright red off and it's gone to a grungy red. And if you look elsewhere, what's on the brush is a mixed grey so eventually you if you mix it too much you will get all greys um, which would be quite nice I suppose so if I do that one that colour and I can do that one that colour and then Dull down that blue, which in turn dulls down that one. So it is fairly quick, I think. And if you do find you've got a bit of a bright, just touch the edge of the green and go over it. You should really wait till it's. But you'll probably find now that it's gone kind of a simple brown grey, a grey brown colour. So you've lost that that transition that gradient but sometimes you do and sometimes you don't you get some nice colours, you, you learn to do some nice colours and go on that yellow hook over there Oh, thank you Emma thank you I'm not sure about the two big wings but I do like the messing about with the grungy colors it, I nearly tried it last week so it's a new technique it's a new thing for me I'm not used to it so but it's it's some of it I like and some of it works well 
and some of them you think oh well I've kind of mixed them too much so I've got that kind of that grey but again you do find you have some fantastic greys um, so I'm going to finish this off actually because I'm quite enjoying myself <laughs> Um, and I'm using a, like a purple blue or a blue and that's giving me different um, different things and I'm, I use an orangey yellow instead of a yellow um, and the same with the purples just taking it out of that complete complementary colour changes them again so it's good to have a play And I need to have a play with these because I don't open my new ones yet. <laughs> Just a bit of a coward. So, and because I've got that orange, it's dulling down this blue. So we've got red in the middle. So we don't really have any really bright colours. So I think purple and yellow actually would be okay. So I'm mixing sometimes blue and yellow just to give it a bit of a, a contrast to see what will happen. So some of them look, work quite well. And we've got this bright. Excuse me. I'd gone over a bit there, but it'll be fine. So 
as long as you get a good coating of red when you touch that blue it should dull that green down that blue down and then just gently over the red and then you will end up on your paintbrush with a grey so you can pick off some little bits if you want to but it's not like me to have really vivid bright colours but I th the neos are so vivid they're so bright uh, this is a Prussian blue so we'll go for Prussian blue with um, have a warm a warmish yellow you could even mix them on there if you want to fairly quick as well that's the other thing that I quite like I'm getting to the stage where I like things that are going to take um, little time And just pick up an orange and scratch in a bit of blue or a purpley blue um, and as you say mix it up a bit you know try different colors and see the best colors you like so I liked this one with red it's malachite gray green with a red but it's very unusual with the pink So activate all that red first and then pick up that malachite colour. And I have ended up with a grey. <clears throat> but you find you'll get some gorgeous greys doing that. If you take the colour to the extreme once you've used it, you will have the most amazing greys so let's carry on so I hope it's not too boring um, I've used that yellow down there I haven't got a vivid yellow have I so do that one the brightest so we will eventually get green but it'll be a grey green and it won't be anything like its original colour
Let's see if I zoom back in, you can see some of the colours. And it doesn't really matter that I've gone over a bit. And you can use some of these colours to go inside others. Because I can use that colour somewhere else. And because they're all a bit grungy anyway, it kind of works really well. Um, if you take a bluer one and a yellower one you obviously get a green kind of grey green because the opposites kind of do that for you so I think I might want some pink on that one and pink and grass green is, is a is a strange one but it, it kind of gives you some really really nice grungy colours Be with that one. Oh, hey Jay, welcome to Bunny's Designs. I'm having a play with my Neo Arts, but most of these colours are the same as the uh, Caran d'Ache Neo Colour 2s. And I'm trying to mix complementary colours together and grunging them up a bit. But I'm changing sometimes slightly using a, a yellower one or a bluer one to kind of mix it up a bit. So I'm quite enjoying myself actually doing this. Sometimes you can just 
<coughs> pop in and out. So I quite like some of them. They're not all perfect, but so welcome to Bunny's Designs. <laughs> I'm uh, just finishing off. But I don't know how long I've been with this one? I'll pan out a bit. So I'm playing with my set of 15, although I'm only using 13 uh, Neos, but most of the colours are in the Neo Colour 2s, and I'm playing with the Derwent Waterpolar Brushes 1 and 2. Uh, and I wanted to make some kind of grungy colours. I did this, there is a video of how I did it originally, the other day. So I finished that off, and I was really liked these kind of grungy colours. That so they're made by with bright colours, but they're kind of grungy, but they're not as grey as the grey greys, the cold greys that I made with my watercolours. They're still kind of bright grunge, if that's the right word. So I thought I'd have a go with mechanicals, because it's always the mechanicals that I, I kind of panicked with. Um, and I really want to do the butterfly, so I needed to have a practice so sometimes it's a good idea if you do not like or you're not comfortable with a particular page like this one has bothered me for a long time um, and I wanted to do the butterfly which is about here somewhere hiding probably um, and I was kind of worried about what I was going to do with it because once you start this, you're going to have to carry on. But I think it'll look quite nice in these colours. So I'm not bothered about it anymore. That was too insipid. Um, but I like these. I don't like these two particularly. I like them, but not not in this kind of mechanical mechanical way. Oh, thank you, Jane. So I thought I'd have a play and, and, and iron out little things that I don't like. Um, so big spaces, it's not, I, I would have been better breaking that up. Um, but I like it for these, all these little tiny marks. And the best thing is, you just kind of scratch a little bit of crayon, just a tiny touch. And it gives you enough colour to manipulate round to make some nice grungy colours. And a bit different to how, I, I, how I've been working with the watercolours. So I quite like that idea. Um... It's got me out of my comfort zone with colour wise and it solved the problem of, of, you know, I really want to make a good job of this, but I really did not know what to do with it. Um, and so I found this new technique, uh, which probably is new, not new to anybody else, but it's new to me, of, of scratching two complementary colours. So you can do it two ways. You can write out a, a really rough um, colour chart or you can use this one. So this one gives you that the malachite green is a blue green so you want a red orange. Um, if you have a reddy violet purple like I have this purplish to me it's pink but it's it's called purplish red which to me is a red violet then obviously I want a yellow green. Um, so I think I'm going to be brave enough now to open the babies open the new babies and play with the new babies so you can't buy these anymore from Karen Dash near color twos uh, near colors you can't buy them you you need to find an art shop that has a supply and I didn't think there would be any but I found them in a shop in London and they do have a set of 30 and they have three boxes of um, they have three boxes of tens so they look like this but they've got 10 colors in them and they are 49 pounds the set of 30 is 149 and then there's my babies there's my babies I'm not sure I want to keep them in this order though. That's the only thing. I'm just, I'm just thinking about the order they're in. I quite like the order they're in, but I would probably put this ultramarine pink um, with my pinky reds. I think 
I'm not sure, but if I have them like this, actually I'm just going to put that under there. I can actually use them. So I know that the bright yellows are here. Can I pan out any more? Oh, yes, I can. No, I can't. Yes, I can. Oh, wrong way. I moved the camera down. <laughs> so I'll pop the camera back to where it was. Put my pencil case. So I'll use them in this way, I think. Uh, I'm hoping they're okay. They look like they've just come out of the factory, but they're very old. They've probably been sat in this box for 15 years, <laughs> I think. So, you know, it's, it, I don't know how long they stopped doing them, but they are quite old. Uh, but they all seem to have the film on the end. So, hopefully, uh, and I didn't test them. I just kind of went for it. So there are a lot of these that are not in my... Oh, that's the salmon one. They're not in my little book of colours. So it was very bad timing because I just bought... Um, I spent £100 <laughs> nearly on my Neo Colour 2s. Uh, but it was something that I just had to buy because they're easy uh, to use. So my, my Neos are here. And obviously now, um, I think there is a salmon pink here at number 51. This is number 51. Now, they call it salmon. Oh, that's a top one, salmon. Yeah, salmon and then a salmon pink. But I don't have... I do have flesh colour, but it's not here. So I need to put um, some of these paler colours in. They won't be in this section. I do have most of them. There's probably only about three I don't have. And there's a gold. Didn't expect to find the gold in there. I didn't think gold was on the list. There's a moss green. An olive. Olive a green ochre olive brown I don't think I've got this one light olive oh yes I do have that one I have most of them there's just one or two that I don't have um, the browns sometimes uh, Toledo brown is quite a nice one burnt umber cocoa Cocoa's the one I didn't I couldn't get. Genuine umber. Raw sienna and ochre. You see I would put my ochre with my green ochre and then I would go greens and then I would go yellows, but they're different here, so I may leave them as they are. I can see the colours. The thing I like with this is I have a colour scale. So when you look at Toledo Brown which I've just picked up. Toledo Brown looks like this. But when you look at my little book of colours, I've got these beautiful fawn colours here. And that's why I love putting them in on a paper palette, because I've got ten shades. Uh, rather than just scratching this, it's going to give me a full-on colour. These Um, just let me move my little thing out of the way. Yes, they are basically, basically they are, yes, Jane. They're not exactly, um, they're not exactly, but they are as near as damn it, yes. Yes. Um, there's the little colour guide here. And you'll have to forgive me for being a silly old precious thing, but um, I don't normally spend a lot of money on things. 
this tight Yorkshire lass is still having palpitations. <laughs> to say nothing of my husband. <laughs> so this is the set that this shop has, a set of 10, which has got some fantastic colours in it. Uh, and they also have the set of 30. Uh, but as I said, they're expensive, but they don't have a website. They have a website, but they don't have a website shop. But I did explain that people might want to get in touch with them and they were quite willing to post them, to sell them over the counter and post them. Um, I would not have bought the Neo Colour 2s if I'd have found these first. I have to say, these are my favourites over Neo Colour 2s because of the sheer... There's probably two near colour twos in every one of these. These are quite fat and they give you they're easy to hold and they also give you the the, the um, you can also make a a well in the top depending on how long we use them. So your little brush if you're working very fine like my daughter was doing that cat you know you just touch and draw um, and that's how I did um, I don't think I've got anything here, have I? Let me have a look. In my little sketchbook. Which I don't seem to have handy. Um, but most of this was done. Oh, it's here maybe. Oh no, this is a new one. There are some squares there, so I might put... I think I'm probably about six short in there. Um, cup, just put my hand on anything that I've done. Is there anything in here? This is Neo. Uh, there was a hand and a pair of scissors that I did. That's drawn with the black. Just a paintbrush and a black. But you can get ten shades of black and greys depending on how you use it and that was just holding the black stick and and, and painting with a paintbrush so there's no drawing you're drawing with a paintbrush and um, there might be another one so i was playing with karen dash look aqua and th i was doing this 20 years ago if not more so it's a very old sketchbook is this <laughs> that was drawn with one of the colours, that looks like an olive. It was painted, drawn with a paintbrush, I should say. Um, that was done the same way. So they're very good for sketching. They're very good for sketching, especially the black. The black is wonderful. You just pick the black up with a paintbrush and you're away. And, and I wanted to do that um, before. There was a hand somewhere that I drew. I can't find it. Um, uh, but I use them in here a lot as well. So all this is Karen Dash. A lot of it is. Not all of it. A lot of it is. Uh, but it allows you to play. It allows you to play with colour. I certainly will not be taking the box out <laughs> with me. Even if I do take, I take this, my girl, but I'm going to give this to my other daughter. I've only got two sets of these. And I paid £15 for these. And I thought that was a lot of money. So that's how long ago it is since I bought them. So they are, you, you will have to hunt around to try and find these. They do not make them anymore. Having said that, I think with a bit of persuasion, and now they've dropped from 126. And this shop had 126, three, three or four tins. Uh, I just saw the, the tops of the tins. And they had a box of, it said 126 full set of Neo Color 2s. And they were £299. Which I didn't think was bad, considering sometimes you see it a lot more. So they do, and they do have a lot of the other sets of the Neo Color 2s. It's just, I like these chunky ones. And this box is even e is still quite easy to take out with you. 
um, and I love these colours. My daughters use some of these, but so I'm going to give one to my other daughter as well when she goes to uni because she'll use them and they will last her a long time. So if you've got any questions. So when you look through these, there, there's just the burnt umber, uh, but I think they stopped doing that. The Elysian, um, my favourite one, and I use it a lot for shadows, is Dark Carmine, and this is in this set. And it's there, the Dark Carmine. So I can't wait to use that one. Sorry, that's Purple Violet. That's Dark Carmine. So I can't wait to use that. Uh, and I said, I am hoping that they're going to be they're going to be okay. So, um, I think that's the only one I don't have. I think most of them are the same colours. So, whatever I've done um, in this little book today, you can do with near colour twos. Um, that was that was playing with them as well. But that was done with them out of my little book here. So these are near colour twos in here. Although I think a couple of them are the chunky ones because they're not in the, the yellow gold one. I didn't have as a near colour, but I have in here. So the near colour, and you can tell there's a slight difference, but not much. So these are near colour twos and a couple of the neo arts. And they go on in exactly the same way. They're almost identical. And from playing with a paper palette, you've got this scale of at least 10 shades, depending on how much water you use on your brush. And that lent me to use it in this way, from my little paper palette. And I really love the fact that you can get hundreds of shades and tones and the whole eagle is done in, it wasn't Toledo, it might have been Toledo Brown. It was done in, no it wasn't, it was done in sepia. And I re-scratched it, I used about a quarter of this, about a quarter, not quite a quarter, to do the whole of that bird from this little paper palette. And then I just scratched the top. The others I've used, but I haven't bothered to, I've only used the tiniest amount to fill the whole of this. Because I do have 92 colours. Now I did say I had 102 colours, but Hubby sold me I had 102, but I've got 92. So like the bright green, um, I've used the bright green. But I can just scribble a little bit over that one, especially this one. Just get this green out while it's here. And just scribble a bit. Now it's a lot easier than the pencils so I can manage to do this myself. That now is completely replenished with tons and tons and tons of colour. So if you have any of these or the Neos do make a little book even if it's just this section these are my near colours. So I have 92 neos in these. And there's ample enough colour for a colour book. If you were doing a, or a small wash, if you're doing a huge watercolour, then you'd want to use the originals. But if you're doing colouring, if you're doing small sketching out, out and about, small watercolour sketches, the little book is fantastic for that. Um, so that's what gave me the idea of playing about with the colours. And then this is the final, almost finished. Um, and I'll zoom in a bit. You can see it. Oopsie. I'm still playing with my delicate laptop. So those are the colours. And that's just by mixing... Oh, that's terribly blurred, sorry. Slightly better. So 
that's mixing two complementary colours together and the neos and that makes it quite quite grungy and I quite like that idea so I might do the butterfly in that idea but that was using the this set of, of 15 so thank you for watching